Hybrid cars versus electric cars, the ultimate green showdown. About this hybrid car versus electric car and the ultimate green car showdown, which is a better vehicle for you, which is it? And the earth, which is better for you and the earth. Welcome to Go Green Hub. And what we're going to do is explore the pros and cons of each type, their environmental impact, and which might be the best fit for your lifestyle. But isn't everybody's lifestyle totally different from everyone else's? I know every duck is unique, even though we might all look the same to you humans. I've been looking into getting a second car for quite some time, and I'm the type of person who I like to research. I go back and forth, and which which ultimately helps me out making out the right decision right out of the gate when I walk into a dealer, and I pretty much know which one is right for me. I thought we were going to do this video with an open mind and be impartial about it. That way the viewers can make up their own minds about which vehicle is right for them. We know what we like, but we still can present information, without having a second agenda, to the viewers. It's not like we're working salesmen at an auto dealership and our only goal is to sell a car to the victim coming in. I've met Ford sales dudes who drove Chevy trucks. When are we going to tell the viewers of the special we have for them? If they stay until the end, when are we going to tell them? Later, when towards the end of the video, we'll argue which we think is best. Whether the electric or the hybrid. Okay, okay, enough. We gotta keep our focus here. All right, here's a criterion we're going to use today so that we leave no stone unturned. George? Number one is efficiency. That's the engine or the motor efficiency. It converts the energy into motion, which makes the actual car go down the road. Number two is the environmental impact. What type of overall impact does the electric or hybrid have on the environment? It's more than you think. Cost is number three. And we're going to compare the upfront cost and the long-term cost of both of these types of cars, following up with the performance for number four. We're going to discuss the performance characteristics of both these types of cars and see where you fit in. And finally, finishing up with the availability of infrastructure, the charging stations and gas stations, maintenance and repair shops. Yeah, but we must admit, for the purposes of this video, we're going to limit our study of electric cars to a Tesla Model S and compare it to a Toyota Prius Hybrid. What about the economic impact and the social effect that these types of cars have on our society and world? Some people are getting bullied by extreme viewpoints. Look at this, Dan. Scotty's hand motions could alone power this car down the road. <laughs> yeah, this other guy, this uh, Prius uh, owner, says that uh, Scotty didn't uh, actually find anything wrong with the hybrid, even though he says they suck. So how about this, right? Her sister, the sister replaced the battery in her hybrid on a 2006 Prius in 2020, went 14 years, 315,000 miles. The total cost was about 3500 parts and labor and so forth. That's yeah, pretty good. The cost of the batteries are coming down. And even when you consider the overall lifespan of the car, that's really what happens. That, that's what I found with my hybrid Prius is that I've got over 100,000 miles on it. And yet the batteries and everything still seem to be holding out great. So I, I don't know what he's thinking. Here's another one, Stan. Check out this guy over here. With Scotty's hands. You can charge that car in about 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, look at, uh, we hope that he has a long life, but he doesn't really like anything. I wonder what he actually does drive if he has his own preference. Yeah. He, he seems to downgrade or denigrate everything, every kind of car. Like over here in one of his, it says, why leasing a car is stupid. I mean, really. But he's controversial. I happen to like a, a hybrid and, uh, uh, I don't know what he actually drives. I wonder what he actually does. Well, here, Model 3, owner. Yeah, and what this guy is doing here is he's telling Scotty, I'd like to inform all the viewers, which is us, and now you guys here, charging from low power, which is under 20%. And Tesla recommends not to do this on a consistent basis. It does take over seven hours on a 220 amp, 32, 220 volt, 32 amp connection. And this guy here, he drives 75 miles a day. Only takes him two hours to charge it overnight. That's fantastic. Let's go ahead and get back to our regular video here. Oh geez, Panda, you'll probably also drag us into the political wars around climate change. Climate change is a real debate that will have a great effect on our lives. We should include it. Isn't that why hybrids and EVs were brought to the transportation market? As I recall, electric cars were first introduced because of the shortage of gas, which resulted in long lines at the gas stations. And also the price of fuel. It's sky high. Okay, back to the purposes of this video. Number one is efficiency, because I've read from several studies conducted by scientists that electric cars are generally more efficient in converting energy into motion, which is the car going down the street. 
There are less moving parts in an electric car, and most people don't know that gasoline cars, they're so inefficient that they lose 30% of their power, their energy, to heat. That's why your engine's always hot. But, but however, don't hybrid cars offer better range and are more energy efficient in certain driving conditions? I know my Toyota Prius gets great gas mileage, and I'm really concerned about range anxiety. Range anxiety? Oh, no. But we've done a video on that, and people should go watch it if they want to conquer their fears connected to range anxiety. EVs lose battery efficiency when they're cold, under freezing temperatures, and when it's very hot, like over 95 degrees. But okay, let's get back to doing a brief comparison of the electric and hybrid cars' efficiencies. The efficiency of the battery and storing and using energy is really a key factor here. It includes things like the energy density of the battery, the charging and discharging efficiency, and the overall lifespan of the battery, plus the regenerative braking system, which charges the battery when you hit the brakes to slow down. We did a video on solid state batteries and how they will drastically impact the EV and hybrid industry. But for hybrids, the efficiency of the hybrid's electric motor and battery can impact overall efficiency with the energy. Because this includes the efficiency of the battery, the electric motor, and also its regenerative braking system and the engine that's actually doing the charging while it's running. We must take in consideration an EV's energy source, which is a source of electricity used to charge the car. The source can also impact its overall energy efficiency. For example, electricity from renewable sources can be considered more energy efficient in a broader environmental context. In comparison for hybrid cars, the efficiency, we need to, we need to look at the energy management system because hybrid cars, they have complex energy management systems and they control when the car uses the electric motor, the engine, when it charges, or even a little bit of both. Okay, now on to part two, which is environmental impact. Both electric and, and hybrid cars are better for the environment than traditional gasoline cars. How can you say that they're better for the environment? I've seen lots of statistics which show that EVs and hybrids are not better when you consider all factors. Agreed to a certain extent, but really the environmental impact of electric cars depends on the source of the electricity. If the electricity comes from coal, you know, the environmental benefits are less. Electric cars are generally seen as more environmentally friendly than hybrid cars because they produce zero tailpipe emissions. Okay, but, however, the production of electric cars, particularly the batteries, can have significant environmental impacts. The extraction of lithium, cobalt, and other materials used in batteries can lead to habitat destruction, water pollution, and other environmental issues. Additionally, the electricity used to charge electric cars often comes from fossil fuels, which those also have their own environmental impacts all on their own. Hybrid cars, on the other hand, produce fewer emissions than conventional cars, but more than electric cars. They can run on electric power at low speeds, which is particularly beneficial in city driving, where a lot of pollution is produced. Yeah, but they still rely on gasoline for higher speeds and longer distances. The production of hybrid cars also has environmental impacts, particularly related to the production of their batteries. So guys, we got to remember that the environmental impact of any car, whether it's electric, hybrid, or conventional, it also depends on factors like how it's driven, how often it's driven, and how it's disposed of at the end of its life. Part three, where we compare the costs. This includes the upfront costs and the long-term costs of both types of cars. Electric cars can be more expensive upfront, but can have a lower operating cost. When comparing the upfront and long-term costs of hybrid and electric cars, you might want to consider the following factors. Number one here is the purchase price. Generally, electric cars tend to be more expensive upfront than hybrid cars. However, Costs can vary greatly depending on the make and the model and the trim levels. Number two is fuel costs. Electric cars are usually cheaper to run because electricity costs less than gasoline. Number three is maintenance costs. Electric cars typically have few moving, fewer moving parts than the hybrid cars do, and that's obvious. And this can lead to lower maintenance costs over time. Number four, battery replacement costs. Both types of vehicles may require battery replacement at some point which can be a significant expense. Finally, number five, government incentives. Many governments offer incentives like rebates, uh, tax tax incentives and stuff like that for purchasing electric vehicles. That can, ups that can offset some of your upfront costs and possibly some costs down the line also. Part four, performance. 
Let's discuss the performance characteristics of both types of cars. Electric cars can offer faster acceleration and a smoother ride, while hybrid cars can offer better range. Electric cars are powered solely by electricity. They're known for their instant torque, quiet operation, zero tailpipe emissions, obviously. They can also have fewer, fewer moving parts, which can lead to lower maintenance costs. However, they typically have a shorter range than hybrid or gasoline cars and require longer to refuel, although this is improving with advancements in technology. Hybrid cars, on the other hand, use a combination of a gasoline engine and electric motor. They can offer better fuel efficiency than traditional gasoline cars and have a longer range than electric cars. They can also refuel quickly at any gas station. However, they still produce tailpipe emissions, and their fuel efficiency can vary depending on driving conditions. Part 5 is availability of the infrastructure. The main difference is about infrastructure is really the availability of how to fill up. Charging stations with electricity for the electric cars, or gasoline, which seems to be every quarter mile over the entire United States, so you can refuel your hybrid car. Remember, the best option for you depends on your individual needs and circumstances. For me, I'm undecided. Maybe you guys can help me make a choice, whether a hybrid or a total electric. Some people might prefer the range of flex and flexibility of a hybrid car, like me. I picked the hybrid at this time, but someday soon, maybe an EV. Huh. Or they might just want to stick to their big gas-powered pickup truck, which is what I'm going to do. You guys are such wussies. While others might prefer the efficiency and environmental benefits of an electric car, so I'm looking at the possibility of owning a Tesla Model S, if I can ever afford it. As for me, to take my kids to and from school right now, 100% EV would be my next purchase. Now for longer trips, um, it'd be a hybrid or even a big truck for those longer trips, more luggage, and camping. Hope you've enjoyed this video from Go Green Hub. Stan and George here. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe, the like button, and... Uh, <laughs> Hey, we love comments too. So if you agree, disagree, have any ideas of something that we might have missed, go ahead and put that down below for us. Yeah, Stan, George, McDuck, Tiger Man, and Panda. The Go Green Hub is the go-to source for all things of sustainable energy and transportation.